I think if you're not understanding the rise, if you're not thinking about the rise of China, you're not, th you're not thinking about the future of life on planet Earth. Because while the, the past century is largely Europe and the United States, so the, the 19th century, the 1800s are largely Europe, the 1900s are largely the United States, the, the 21st century is going toward Asia, India and China for sure, and then China's just going to run the show. I mean, it's not even a question. You know, the, the nature of ups and downs, of power sources, it's like, it's like sports teams. Those of you who are really into sports, you know, like one team is the powerhouse, and then a few years later, they're not the powerhouse because they have to rebuild, and that's the nature of life. The group that's on top at one point won't be on top at the next point. It just goes up and down and up and down. And the United States will not be ruling the world throughout history. This is not, it's not going to happen. The next century is really... This, we're, in, we're headed to the China century. There's not a question. And part of it is because you all have a government. Like, when you need to make something happen, you just make it happen. Like, we don't. We just get mired down in people arguing with one another. Like, our entire infrastructure in the United States is just cr crumbling into nothingness. And we're just, like, wasting time doing stuff. But if you all need, like, a new road... You just be like, we're going to make a new road right here, and we're just going to destroy all these villages and all this, whatever, and we're making the new road, and this is what we're doing. It's, we're just planning it. Yeah, but what if that leader is wrong? What's that? What if that leader is wrong? Like, it is all controlled by one governor. Yeah. That, that governor is wrong. Like, what? How do you see, Ch how do people in China see China? Oh, uh, do you want the real answer or the... Well, we'll I want your answer, but don't forget you're on YouTube, right? And it is, you, you know. My answer is uh, we still have a long way to go. And uh, we're just a humble little country in East Asia. America is number one. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, yeah, lo, yo, man, don't be fooled by that shit right there. Don't be that's fooled how, by him. That's how the Chinese are going to take over. Yeah. Like he, here's this guy up here with his NASA shirt. No, y'all are still number one. Yeah, right. We're gonna like be running the show in 50 years, but whatever. All right. No, but go ahead. Like, how do you deal with this this idea right here of like of cement and the growth and the you know like I mean one thing after another. Like, do y'all talk about that or how much do you talk about it? Uh, average people in China actually hate us. Hate hate the international student from China came to the United States because we are the ones who uh, took advantage of all that uh, development. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think I can represent the whole Chinese people. America yeah. number one. America yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How, so, Amer so Chinese on average, is it true in Korea, like, do Koreans like Americans? I honestly think that America is, I love America, but then it's glorified a lot because of the media and soft power. And a lot of the times in movies, Hollywood movies and stuff like that, it's very glorified, everything you see. And especially Korea and China have the same climate throughout the country, mostly. Um, and in America, you can go to different areas, different states, you d experience different culture, different accent, different type of, you see different things. Yeah. So obviously you can experience a lot more things in one country. And then in the movies, you see different things, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, then, yeah. like, it's just more glorified, I would say. I, I essentially think that even the, even though the cultures are different, humans are, same, like, they have the same desires, they have same needs and wants in the core. So I really believe that it's just the culture that's a difference. And then the culture, there's no good or bad. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's just how people view it. Okay. Depending all right. So you all understand this idea of soft power, right? You have hard power. You have like military. You have politics. You have economics. You have all that, and then you have soft power, like K-pop. K-pop is the soft power. K-pop just is a way of bringing soft power into the West and just kind of conquering us. And we were mostly listening to K-pop before class. Do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah. Probably. So what I think you're, is... You're Chinese, right? Yeah, I'm Chinese. So before you talk about, like, next century, the China going to... I never thought about it. Like, bef because I'm... Probably because I'm not really care about, like, politics or, like, the power or, you uh -huh. know, economic. Because I'm studying, like, uh -huh. art or design. So that's not my thing. And, uh, but it's really interesting you're saying, like, oh, China is the best or something like that. 
I never thought about it. Yeah, that's really. Yeah. In, I know Americans mostly. Okay, let me ask you this question: Who are the Chi do any? Who are the Chinese students who are driving around State College in their Lamborghinis <laughs> and stuff? All right, is that any of you, bro? What kind of car do you drive? I drive a Nissan Altima. A Nissan Altima? Yes, 07. 07? Yes. Bro, what are you? What's that? Oh wait, hang on. Oh, you're one of those guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead. What, what kind of car do you drive? Uh, a Mercedes. Which one? Uh, like the expensive one or the cheap one? Cheap, cheap, cheap. Very cheap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you it's very, very cheap. It's a uh, 1960. <laughs> so here, let me show you this real fast. Um, right here. Here are the number of Chinese students. Go back to 2010. This is, so this is like nine years ago. Here's how many Chinese students are studying abroad. And now, in 2016, here's the number, and the number has continued to go up. So, but these are not poor Chinese students. So a disproportionate number of people are people who are going to come from families who can afford, like go to private schools and that sort of thing, right? So do your parents pay for that? Oh, I assume so. It's not you, right? What do your parents do? Uh, all kinds of things. All kinds of things? Yeah, all kinds. Okay. Legal things, I imagine? Legal, legal. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Give me one. Oh, they own hospitals. All right. So that's how you can have a Mercedes. Do you, are you, well, how about your family? I don't have a car. You don't have a car? Dude, he does. Do you have a girlfriend? Dude, he doesn't have a girlfriend and he has a car. So, you know what I mean? So wait, how do you and how do Chinese students deal with, think about the students who are driving around in Lamborghinis and Maseratis and stuff like that? Mm. Do you think that's, do they think that's cool? I'm not one of them, so I don't know. I mean... No, no, but how would you, as a, someone who's not wealthy, look at um, them? Just, they're rich. They're rich? Yeah, that's just a lifestyle of them. Yeah? Like, they just have money, so... They just have more money. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you this question? Um, do you know the answer to that question? Oh, I don't know, but I think Vietnam is one of them. <laughs> No, but who, what country has the greatest number of internet users? I don't know. I... You don't know? Yeah. China? India? Vietnam? India? Yeah. India? No. Wait, oh. What do you think? Uh, Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say the U.S. because of, like, the social medias they created and, like, the platforms, but uh, I would say... China? It's China, by far. Mm. Yeah, over 700 million. India is about 450 million, 500 million, and the U.S. is about 280 million. We're not even close. China's by far and away. Let me ask you this. Wait, wait, hang on. Wait, hang on. That one. Do you know the answer to that question? Vodka. Vodka? Yeah. Maybe, maybe rum. Maybe, maybe rum. rum? Yeah, rum. Rum. I can't do you know the answer? Do you know the answer to that question, bro? As a Korean speaking, I'll say soju. <laughs> it, it's soju. By far and away, it's soju. Not only is it soju, but of the spirits that are of the brands of spirits in the world. Like Smirnoff Vodka is a brand of vodka. So you take all the brand, all the liquors in the world, the spirits, and then you line up in addition, you divide them into all their brands. So you got thousands upon thousands, right? The number one and number three best selling spirits in the world are both brands of soju. And the second is Smirnoff Vodka. You Koreans drink a lot, man. You do so. What is so? How is drinking in Korea compared with drinking in the U.S. Like here at Penn State, could could Penn State students hold up to Koreans? Well, so um, now I'm 20 and turning 21 this year, and I've been I've been able to drink like two from two years ago from now in Korea officially, like legally. It's like probably like they have a lot of experience compared to the one who is in the same age in America, so probably that's why. They know better in spirits, like, the, like drinking cultures better than here. So I'd say that, like, when you go to parties, like, 
like when you go to like especially the fat parties, they like they drink a bunch of like um, alcohols that can that even the point they can't resist, I guess, and they like they just become all like trolling, stupid. <laughs> Yeah, scooping. It's like, yeah, I see less in Korea that. You see less of that in Korea? Because they do have that experience when they, like, when they're able to drink. So it's my personal experience, though. It's like, yeah. I can't really generalize that. So you think there's actually, when you go to parties here in the U.S., yeah. you actually, so even though Koreans, like, y'all drink, man, you are professional drinkers with some serious, like, soju is tough. Well, but you feel like people drink more, like, people are more stupid here, like, it's out of control. Well, if you want to put that way, like, put stupid. Yeah, sure. All right, okay. Yeah, you don't want to say that, but I will say that. Do you have a similar thing as a Korean? I mean, like, like one bottle of soju will be, like, $3 um, in Korea. So then, like, you sit there. Like, during my internship, like, a few years ago, I worked for a really big corporation. And then I, I went with my boss to make a deal with, like, our partner, and then I had to drink because it's like kind of the culture. So I took like three shots of soju because that's just kind of like a friendly thing to offer. It's not like, oh, let's drink, like, like let's get effed up. It's more like, let's just like chill, like have a nice conversation. So it's kind of like the culture where when you want to have a conversation, it's like you have like a, like a bottle of soju. But then it's kind of so stronger wait, than so wine. So you were with your boss, and mm -hmm. you were expected to drink? Yeah. It is a business situation. Yeah, it's not expected. like he was forcing me or anything. It's not, an, uh, like, it's not an uncomfortable situation. It's kind of the culture, and I didn't mind it either. So it was more like a social setting. And is that similar? Is that your experience? You were shaking your head. Is that, is that how it is in China? You are supposed to drink with your boss? Yeah. I mean, that kind of thing. Is that, would that be uncommon? If your boss asks you to. If your boss asks you, then you, you would. You also have to hold the cup like lower. You have to hold the cup lower than your boss's cup? Yeah. Yeah? Is that? Yeah, same thing. Yeah, go ahead. I agree. I agree. So there, there are lots of things that you have to do. Mm -hmm.